There's nothing worse than having like this idea in your head and you're trying to figure out how to do it in the program that you're using, whether it's music or painting or video or photography, and you don't know how to do it because you just don't know how to use the tools that you have. Well, today I'm gonna show you how I go about every one of my video projects in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you all my favorite shortcut keys. I'm gonna optimize your computer and I'm also gonna show you my deliver settings and hopefully this will get your art of flow and your creativity moving a lot faster and you'll benefit from being able to do things twice as fast because time is money and so hopefully this helps you and let's get started. <laughs> First thing I like to do is get all my media from a folder and kind of go through the clips and try to figure out the in and out points. For example here, there's a little shake in the very beginning of this clip. What I actually like to do is go up to my keyboard and push I. That selects my in for the clip and then I continue the clip and where I want the out to be maybe will be, let's just say right, right here. So then I go on my keyboard and push out. Now if I actually click and drag on this video here and drag it into my media pool of clips, so the specific in and out points for that clip will be what I selected and dragged down here. Now once I do that for all the clips, I actually like to go down to my project settings and make sure that the timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080. If you need to, you can actually make it smaller or larger depending on your machine. Um, this is a good spot for me, I don't have any problems. I'm also on a Mac, so what I like to do is, by default, this is um, ProRes 422HQ, but I like to select the LT, which is basically the lowest and easiest. Besides proxy, I, um, I select LT. If you're on a Windows machine, I'm pretty sure it's a DNX HR HQX, but if you go down and select the lowest format, or one of the lowest formats, you'll have a much smoother playback in your project. Then I click save. These are already the settings that I have, so I can't, I didn't change anything. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna click cancel. So then once I do that, I right click, I highlight all the clips here, I right click and generate optimized media. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna help the project play back. Now, what I just selected in the previous settings was optimized media to be ProRes H22. LT. Now that's basically what this program is converting those clips to. So now when I play back the clips, it will be playing back in that format rather than the 4K, you know, H.264 codec. So then now once I jump into my edit tab, the clips that I have put in my media pool here in the media tab are now here. I'm just gonna hop over the cut page because a lot of the shortcuts that I use are actually in the edit tab. That's where I find these to be the most useful. So then what I like to do is come down here, drag the clips into my timeline, and you pretty much you know, start building your project. But in order to navigate it really well and to kind of you know, get your ideas down as quickly as possible, this is what I'm gonna start off with. Instead of using this scroll tab here to kind of make your projects bigger and smaller, you can actually hold down the Alt or Option key, depending on if you're on a Mac or a Windows, and use your scroll mouse wheel to go up and down. Now I'm actually on a Mighty Mouse or a Magic Mouse from Apple. So what's really cool is that I can actually, when I zoom in, I can use my finger and go left and right to go on the project. Now if you zoom in really far and you don't have a Magic Mouse, you can actually hold down Shift and then Z and that will show you your whole project. Now if you wanna go back into where you were zoomed in, you hold down Shift Z again and that will actually show you where you were before. Another thing next is that I use the B key to switch between my arrow and blade tool. Now the blade tool is used for cutting the clips. Then you can select A again and then go back to selecting what you want for your clip if you need to make further adjustments. You can also select T to do the trim tool which kind of moves that blade cut that you made further and behind where you were before if you need to make an adjustment like that. I actually don't use it as much, but I thought it'd be a helpful tool to throw in there. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to duplicate a clip real quick. You can actually hold down Alt and Option again and click and drag that clip up and above. 
really helpful when you need to do like masking or creating a fusion composition or a compound clip. Or if you just need some B-roll, you can put it up there. And that's where my next shortcut comes in actually. If you need to move something here or if you're just editing and you wanna disable the clip so it's not um, on the timeline, you can actually just push D to disable that clip and it will be gone. You can select that clip again, push D and it will bring it back to life. All right, so my next tip or, and, or shortcut is if you need to like, you know, jump onto a new project or if you are kind of done editing and your eyes need a break, you can actually just, instead of trying to remember next time you come into the project, you can select M to put a marker and then you can actually select that marker and push M again and you can name the marker and add some notes, even some keywords if you like and then click done. Um, I'm just gonna remove the marker for now because I don't need it. Uh, the next thing is basically a really, really helpful tool that I use all the time and it kind of was a pain in the butt before I even knew about this. But say if you want to select a clip or a portion of a clip and the audio clip, um, that's really important. You have to select both those, at least when I do it. And you want to delete both this section here, right? Okay, so normally what you could do is just click on the clip and click backspace and that would just delete that one clip. You can do that with the audio clip. You can actually do it with both if you hold down command and select both and delete. But the problem is, say if you're like deleting something in the very beginning of your project and you've worked on your project, like you have like a 10 minute long project and you don't wanna sit there and you know go back to everything and click and drag it all. Well, what do you do? So this is what I do. Select the clip and the audio clip that you want to delete. And if you actually hold down shift and then backspace, it will delete it and everything will come back into where you deleted that um, clip the whole project will move. So that's such a great time saver. It is super efficient and it's just awesome. Probably my number one tool that I use besides going back between A and B for the blade tool and the arrow key and the arrow tool. Uh, okay, so real quick in Fusion, I have just one uh, shortcut that I use here mainly. And as you've seen in previous tutorials, if you've seen, I hold down shift and push space bar to access all the tools and nodes that are available for this program. It's really quick and efficient. You can just type in what you want uh, and select it and just add it and it automatically adds it in between the nodes that you're trying to work on. That is it for the Fusion tab. As far as color, uh, say if you have a clip that you did some color correction on, so if I just go crazy and do something like this here, and I want to add the same effect or the same grade to this clip here that I did on this clip, but I don't want to have to do like, you know, the same work for this many layers of work. Well, what's easy is that if you are in the clip viewer so there's a timeline which is like the overall project that you can do corrections on or the clip viewer which is individual clips you need to come down here on the clip that you want to make the grade to or the adjustments to and then right click on the the clip that you want to apply the grade from and click on apply grade now if i go back it's right here apply grade and it changes this clip and grade it like you did on this clip. Now, you will need to make further adjustments because every clip is different, but that is a huge time saver. And I definitely recommend learning how to use that to your fullest ability and making the best out of your coloring because coloring can take a long time and it can be pretty intense as well. You know, Fairlight is a whole nother section that I'll probably cover in another tutorial. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of things that I could cover, but not too many shortcuts. And the last thing is the deliver tab. Now, one thing you have to make sure, say if you want to output something that's 4K, but your timeline is in 1080, uh, you're going to need to go back and adjust these settings and put it in a 4K resolution, and then you'll be able to output 4K. It's kind of like Final Cut Pro. I leave everything kind of the way it is and there's not really any shortcuts here, but that's just kind of something that you may run into that you need to know. And uh, also, I guess this is the last and final thing. I like to select my in and then output like I did when selecting clips in the very beginning and select in and out range. You're gonna need to obviously name it and put a file location 
and just add to render queue and then it shows up here and then you render it and that's it. So anyways, hope that was uh, helpful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, please turn on notifications, comment below. I really appreciate it if you guys support my channel. I really, I really appreciate it. Any of the links down below also are Amazon affiliate links. So I do get a kickback if you buy something. You guys rock. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Oh my God, what is he doing? <laughs>